Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be getting started on a short series dedicated to the DHC-2 Beaver. Uh, one of those amazing little bush planes that uh, the only way to kill one of these things is to take it apart piece by piece, but even then it might just magically reassemble itself. So what we're going to be doing is uh, kind of going uh, well in depth here. We're going to be having access to uh, the real world checklist for this plane, which looks a little bit like this over here. And we're also going to get the opportunity to kind of just sort of go through the quirks of this plane, you know, talk about a little bit of what it means to me, as well as, uh, you know, kind of how to take advantage of it. Some of its sort of neat things that you might not have known, at least I hope. So uh, let's get started. So first things first, uh, when we climb into this aircraft, uh, we got to remember that this is a product of the 1940s. Uh, we visited this airplane a few months ago as well, you know, when it first came out, kind of going through it. But uh, since then, I've learned a little bit about this plane, and I thought I'd kind of share it with our audience here. Uh, the good folks over at Blackbird did an amazing job of uh, simulating the different components of it. I mean, I just love this, and of course, I love the fact there's two steps getting into this thing. There's just so many good things to say about uh, the engineering that they did for this particular design. The airplane engineering. <laughs> as well as uh, some of the little quirks and kind of flight symbolisms and everything that goes along with it. So one of the things you'll notice, of course, is uh, as you climb in the seat here for the first time is we have a significant head down angle. Uh, when I put my head straight here, you'll actually notice that this is level. And if I actually hold my mouse like this, this is the horizon right now. So when we're coming in for landing, we need to remember this magical angle. And the best way I like to think about it is I like to think about my spinner, this kind of curve. Uh, when the curve starts to flatten, which is right here where this little tiny knob is, this is where we have to be when we land the plane. It makes it a little bit easier easier to kind of do that step. So with that all out of the way, uh, when I think of the beaver as well, I think about, you know, when you used to go to air shows and things like that, and they'd always have a beaver come in, and you just don't appreciate how huge this plane is until you see it. And, I mean, you come down here with some of the little mechanical details of, like, the chair and stuff, and I love the fact that your flap pump handle is located right there, and you can see the little hydraulic lines that actually run out to the wings where the actual deed is done, so to speak. And these uh, metal chairs, which are these clanky things, and a little adjustment here where you go ahead and crank this and pull this in order to get it in the proper angle and everything like that. And then you look at our safety belts over here, especially for our co-pilot there. I love the style. You stick all the things in, you twist this, and it goes click, and it locks everything in place. And you notice, of course, we have the little shoulder harness, which is uh, right there, and I love the speaker in the floor and everything. I don't know, it's just so darn cool. So do I. Let's get this thing started and uh, go on a little adventure. Uh, today we'll focus mostly on kind of where everything is. Next video will concentrate on kind of getting around as well as some maneuvers. And of course the final video will be uh, getting this thing on the ground. There's actually two different methods in the book that it describes to get it on the ground. And kind of a fan of one of them, not a fan of the other one. So uh, let's go ahead and do it to it. So first things first, uh, when we're climbing to this airplane, uh, we need to make sure everything's good. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click right here to go ahead and hide that yoke. We're just gonna confirm the fact that everything is basically off. Uh, we're gonna make sure ignition's off, parking brake is set. Uh, we have a little parking brake handle right here, which is nice and easy. Controls are unlocked. Uh, we did that already. Everything works perfectly fine for us, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna make sure the pilot seat's adjusted. Uh, trim is as needed. Uh, trim for this plane is relatively simple. There's actually an interesting piece with the trim, which I thought was kind of cool uh, when I was first messing with it. Trims, by the way, um, are located directly above of your head. You can actually see we have elevator nose up, we also have elevator nose down. All we're confirming is that this line is pointing more or less at the uh, neutral position. You can actually grab one of these and go rear, 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 if uh, you need a really specific trim. Honestly, I'm perfectly fine with the way that the trim is there. It's not that big of a deal. It's going to tell us to go ahead and uh, shut all of our switches off. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We've done that already. Um, the book says, of course, we're supposed to leave one on, and that's for the generator. However, our version of the BNDHC2 here has an alternator, not a generator. It's uh, actually a good thing. It makes our lives a little bit simpler as far as uh, you know, trying to get stuff all kind of squared away for us. So it's not too, too bad of a thing. You know, Like I said, I kind of appreciate that little tiny change there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide this real quickly here as uh, we kind of continue down the rest of our list. So zinging down real fast, uh, we want to make sure we have fuel. Of course, uh, fuel, by the way, uh, we can't see what our fuel quantity is uh, when we're like this. We pop the battery on real quick. Uh, we can see uh, we've got a pretty good amount of fuel here. We're actually going to request some fuel real fast. Thank you. And now we've got our fuel. <laughs> and you can see everything's all nice and fueled up. So that's all looking pretty groovy as well. Uh, this, of course, would be the time to set our altimeter in our clock. So we'll go set our altimeter the way we need to based on uh, whatever it is for that particular day. Looks pretty good to me. So I'm pretty, like I said, happy with that. Happy with that. Coming back over here, I'm just going to go check here. Let's see. We have altimeter, communications, equipment, test, landing lights, navigation lights. We check all that. All right. So then we go ahead and get ready to start this plane. Now, this thing has a very, very large 400 horsepower engine. And it's, um, it's, it's, I don't want to call it brutal, but um, when it starts, it starts, uh, whether or not you're ready for it to start, so to speak. So it's just kind of one of those things that you just have to kind of be mindful of uh, when you're playing with here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, double check to make sure our fire guard is in position. Now, that's just a fancy way to say that the uh, individual who would be standing at the fire extinguisher is basically ready to go, which I'm sure he is. Of course, uh, the next thing we'd want to do is we want to make sure our switches are off, which we did. Throttle lever, we're going to crack it like that. Uh, that's it. We're going to make sure our propeller control is actually all the way back, which is a little different in this plane. And our mixture control, of course, is all the way back as well. Uh, the one thing you'll notice in the manual is it calls for this to be an automatic mixture. Um, we don't get the automatic mixture. We get the old-fashioned, I'm not sure if it's working mixture. Um, kind of part of the fun. And lastly, what they asked us to do, of course, is that we take a look at our list uh, one last time here. So you'll notice they want us to go ahead and make sure our carburetor heat is in the correct position. Uh, when I come down here, I can see that the carburetor heat is indeed in the cold position, which is fine. If you have a lot of like sand and dust, we actually can start in the warm position and that'll actually protect our um, engine. It basically goes through the filtered air here to makes it a little bit safer for us. But for us, uh, we're just going to kind of leave it like that today to kind of keep it nice and simple, like kind of a piece. So what we do, of course, is in the old days, uh, we had an initial starter, we basically plug it in and they crank it and that's how they engage it but we have an electric starter on here so things get a little bit different for us again not a bad thing it's just a little bit different so as far as a normal engine start goes um again relatively straightforward process we're going to confirm the propeller area is clear Looks good to me. Uh, you read yellow clear prop and all that kind of thing like that, of course. Battery master switch would come on. Of course, for us, we're in the U.S., so that's going to come on. So we're going to go ahead and pop on our battery. Remember, our alternator would have been already set. So the one thing we're going to do now is we're going to float down here where it says closed, emergency fuel cutoff. Uh, we just want to make sure that this is in the open position, uh, which we can see very, very clearly right there. Uh, what we do is we select the fuel tank to the fullest tank. Uh, interestingly enough for this, uh, the full tank for us, uh, the rear fuel tank is considered the starter tank. Um, when you read through the POH area, you'll see that the POH describes the rear Rear tank is the further, obviously the farthest back, but it's the one that has the most profound effect on our stability. So by sucking the gas out of the back one first, it makes for a much, much stabler flight like that. So that's looking pretty good there. Uh, now what we do is we take our mixture lever and we're going to go ahead and slam it to the auto rich position, which is going to be all the way forward like that. And now we have to build up fuel pressure. Let's talk about that fuel pressure. So if you take a look here, we have kind of our catch-all engine instrument. Let me go ahead and hide this real fast so you can kind of get a feel for it. What you're going to observe here is that we have some fuel and we got a little green range here. We also have some oil temperature and we have some oil pressure pressure of which we have none right now. Makes sense. Also, our cylinders are very cold. Makes sense again. So what we need to do is we need to build up enough pressure so that it gets inside the green arc right here, which is going to be ideal. Uh, to do that, it's actually really simple. Uh, what you do is you have this little wobble pump here. I'll go ahead and zoom out so you can kind of see both. And when I grab this wobble pump and I slam it down, you'll see it immediately gives me about six PSI here. And you'll see that the pressure drops very, 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 very rapidly. So after I've done that, uh, what we do is we go find the primer, which is in the dumbest spot of this airplane, I swear. Who's supposed to know this? One, two, three, four. That's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and slam the magneto to the starter position, which we have here. And as you can see, we've lost all of our fuel pressure. And uh, there's two ways to fix this, of course. So one thing we could do is we could start with the boost pump, which is very, very dangerous uh, because you can end up dumping a bunch of raw fuel inside the uh, cylinders if you're not careful. But um, again, we could just do that once. <laughs> and that gets us enough kick. So we're going to take the throttle, we're going to crack it a tiny bit, and we're going to reach over to the ignition, and we're going to crank it. That's it. So as soon as this thing starts, we're just going to gently pop the throttle for it. Um, we're not trying to catch it or anything like that. It's about uh, 750 RPM. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Now, here's where things get a little different uh, when people see it. So one of the things we want to do is check out oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure. That looks good. Seal under head temperature is coming up. Everything is groovy as far as that goes. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Again, we don't have the style starter that they would have in this one, but that's okay. We also don't have a booster switch. You can see they actually removed it for us. It just floods it with sparks and makes it run a little bit. But the one thing you'll notice here, which I find super interesting here, is as soon as the engine fires, throttle back to about 500 to 800. We got that. Do not pump the throttle. Oil pressure, it does. Now, one of the cool things here is this is when oil pressure reaches 50, you can slowly go ahead and push the RPM controller to the full RPM position. That's because in the old days, uh, the way that they had these things set up, this is not a Curtis electric propeller. This is an old school oil pressure based one. Uh, coming down here though, you can see I clearly have 50. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smoothly push my propeller control forward, just like that. And you can hear something uh, distinctively rattling inside this uh, aircraft here, which I love. Uh, once we've done that, of course, um, we're now ready to go ahead and get this thing into the idle position. Uh, so I'm just going to kick in just a little bit of power, getting that big, angry radial engine. Oh, it just doesn't like the start. And we're going to pop that to about 1,000 revolutions. Now that that's going, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go pull this about halfway back. Uh, the reason we're pulling this sucker back here is um, we've actually had an issue with uh, one of the airplanes that I fly with lead in the spark plugs, even in today's day and age. So it's just one of those kind of things where it just comes 
comes up once in a while. And no, I don't know why my cursor has decided to be a little arrow there. Oh, well. So, of course, we're good. We're over priming. Ignition's good. Starting engine warm up is 1,000 revolutions per minute. Uh, we're waiting for 100 degrees. Uh, so, on the oil. So, you can see we're just at 40 Celsius, well, which is perfect for us. That's about what we want it to be. So, I'm perfectly happy with that. So, that'll work well. Let's go ahead and get everything else on. We're going to get our radios on. Uh, there's a bunch of different radio options that give you in this plane that have gone into that in uh, videos past. Uh, the key thing here is that uh, we're conventional setup here. We're basically in a um, I want to call this Eastern New York State is the best way to describe it. And of course, what we're going to do is we're going to go on a little adventure over to Hartford and I kind of use that as a way to sort of kind of get our little navigation on here. So basically, this is the warm-up procedure. Um, when you read through the POH in this aircraft, uh, they're very, very, very specific about the warm-up. Uh, you can see here, they're actually constantly discussing things like, you know, make sure it does this, do not rush, look right here, never rush engine warm-up. And of course, they give you all sorts of warnings and everything like that. They give you a whole piece here, but we're going to do all this stuff in a few moments there once we get a little bit more um, heat going here. So looking down at my cylinder head temperature, I'm well out of the uh, nasty range, which would only be 100 Celsius. Uh, you can see, again, we're an air-cooled engine. No cow flaps, which uh, kind of surprised me. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of the beast, just is what it is. Uh, good thing here, too, if uh, you knew you wanted a specific altitude, like let's say we want to do 3,500, we could actually program that in right now. And uh, of course, we can't do any of this arming business because we're not in the air or anything like that. And of course, if it was nighttime, we could flip on our instrument and lights and everything like that. The key thing is during warm up is for just letting everything kind of cycle. And it's a real fun. The POH actually describes how uh, when they get this aircraft started, like if you have an issue where you can't turn the propeller by hand, you can unscrew all the spark plugs and let all the oil out of the bottom cylinders and then basically crank it again. It's just the most fascinating thing. So our taxing for this aircraft is a little different. Uh, you'll notice here we have a flap selector here. Uh, you'll notice this is, reminds you to do this for takeoff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the flaps into the climb cruise position. This particular position you can literally leave on all time. Uh, there's no reason to uh, switch all the way to minimum flaps here. We actually were to run outside real quickly here. If you actually look at the flaps themselves, uh, we have these big, big, big uh, flap runs here. If I actually were to put the flaps up, you can see that it takes a little bit of that curvature out of the wing. If you're really, really light, and uh, they're really the only information I found out about this, is if you are light, you can kind of cheat here. And I use that kind of quarter flaps if you need to. Um, it's not, I leave the flaps up, I'm sorry. But like I said, for the most part, just leave it in that position. It's not going to give you any issues. You're not going to overspeed the airplane or anything like that. So this is good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, get ready for takeoff here. Uh, we got ourselves a nice soft field. So we're going to use our standard soft field procedure. We're going to pull that all the way towards us. And uh, we're just going to release the brake here. And it's uh, going to start rolling on its own pretty much right away. Nice and slow. Uh, remember, you are a tail dragger. So uh, we want to definitely take our time uh, as we're kind of bouncing around on the runway here. So I'm going to go line myself up into the wind. It's not quite into the wind here. Uh, we're a bit of an angle, and I always hear something uh, banging and rattling around, which is uh, so much fun there. There we go. It's looking pretty good there. Right about there. Nobody else has taken off for us today. We're going to go ahead and do our warm-up now. Uh, take a look here. We do have enough oil temperature. We're out of the red here, uh, so we're going to smoothly increase power to about 1,750 RPM. If all this rattling, by the way, bothers you like this, you can actually come over here and you can shut the vibration off, and you can see how everything freezes. Uh, it's completely up to you whether or not that bothers you or doesn't. Make sure your mixture is rich. There we go, about 1,750 RPM, right about there. That looks good to me. All we're going to do is a run through our magnetos. Looks good to me. We're going to check our carburetor heat. Yeah, that's carburetor heat if I've ever seen it. Go ahead and slam the carburetor heat back close there. Looks good to me. And we're going to check our suction. We're going to check our oil temperatures and pressures. And everything's looking good. We're going to pull this to idle, see if the engine dies. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking when I think of that. Give it just a little bit of power. And everything's looking really good here. One of the things you could do is you can actually tighten these up a little bit if you want them to kind of bounce back and forth a little less. It's just kind of one of those little things. All right, delightful. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our next step here. So when I scroll down a little bit, I've got my taxing. I've got all that stuff. We've uh, done all those components, so we've got our takeoff. Takeoff on this one's uh, really, really simple uh, because I like how they tell it right here. Line up, smooth power, anticipate the tendency to swing to the left. It's not bad. The plane will fly itself off. Uh, you want to catch the tail, and you'll notice here as soon as safe height, you reduce immediately to continuous power. And uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. And again, 80 miles per hour is going to be our VY. A flaps to climb and then retrim. Retrim is really, really, really important in this airplane. And you'll see why in a second. So let's go ahead and get our thing all set up here. We're going to go to takeoff flaps. 
That looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set this. So we're going to be going uh, mostly east today. Uh, one of the things that is unfortunate with this aircraft is because you have the uh, different types of um, avionics selection packages on this, one of the things you might notice is even if you're on the correct frequency for something, you might not see it. If you quickly switch over to GPS mode, uh, one of the things you can check on the bottom is to see what the CDI is locked into. Right now, you can see that it's uh, set to V-lock, which is good. It just means we can't pick up the frequency. But if you swing back to analog radios here, uh, you know that that was uh, probably not the reason. Just kind of one of those things. So our tram, trim is set. Our takeoff flaps are nice and set. It just says do everything really, really smoothly. And again, not too, too scary here. So I'm going to go ahead and smoothly apply power. I'm going to hold the stick back to me. Make sure your mixture is rich. And we're going to go right up. This thing sounds angry. That warning is not a bad thing. It's just the airplane. Get ready to put your controls to the left as it comes uh, off the ground. Unsticks, and now we're up in the air, just like that. We're going to allow ourselves to get a little bit of power here, and now we're going to switch to maximum continuous power. Uh, the best way to do this is you just go ahead and pull this one back. Uh, remember, continuous power in this one is 33 and a half. So it's going to be right there, and then we just back the power back up, and uh, we're going to reduce that to 2,200, which is the top of the green arc, just like that. And now we are on our way up. Uh, we have enough ground underneath us. I can go ahead and flip the flaps over to cruise mode. And now, now we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, that's about as complicated as this aircraft is to get airborne in this one. So since we are doing some VOR navigation today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be swinging over to my right there. Looks to me like I need to go east. To get east, of course, I need to turn east. And now you can see here I've uh, way overturned it. But I'm going to appreciate yeah, kind of looking around. Uh, one thing you got to watch out for with this plane, by the way, is the directional gyro has a really fun tendency to just kind of get lost. So just be a little mindful of that because uh, uh, when you're cruising around do not be surprised in the slightest if uh, when you are doing so that uh, you see it just sort of start to process you can press the d key on your keyboard uh, for those of you who are curious now according to the poh on this aircraft so uh, once we go ahead and get ourselves up let's go ahead and uh, grab that little kind of checklist again real quickly here you'll see here uh, we've got our safe altitude and safe power all preset if we were a little bit lighter of course we could do 30 and 2000 30 and 2000 is easy uh, the recommended speed you can see here is 80 and we're keeping the nose relatively low here to getting about 100 miles an hour which is kind of give it a little bit better um, one of the interesting things here is i love how they say this is all about reducing engine wear here is uh, basically use auto rich and of course it's going to reduce your feet per minute drastically and again keep in mind on your this and i like how the, all this stuff is uh, relatively straightforward we'll take a look at that later so we're going to continue our climb here i'm going to go ahead and give it a couple more taps of trim here uh, one of the things you want to be careful with the trim is the trim is um it's picky and it's very very picky and uh, you'll see exactly what i mean the first five times i'm gonna go ahead and activate the autopilot by engaging it just by squeezing that real quickly there uh, and you can see here i have my altitude selected and i've set that to 3500 and i can swing on nav mode real quickly here just to kind of get this aircraft a little bit more under control and it's all like i said relatively easy we've got about 3,000 feet to go as far as that goes so from here everything is uh, relatively conventional uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look at climb and navigation on the next video enjoy